Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the taxability or lack of for interest on state and local obligations which are called municipal bonds or simply put muni bonds. Simply put, the interest from municipal bonds, whether state or local, is exempt, exempt from taxation. Now we need to understand why, that's the first thing we need to understand, why is that interest exempt? That's one thing. Two, is we need to understand how to perform the computation. So in other words, if I have to compare a municipal bond or a state bond versus a corporate bond, which one will I choose? They might have different interest rate. Well, it all depends on my tax bracket. It all depends on my marginal tax rate. And this is what we'll try to compute, show you how to evaluate whether an investment is better if you put your money in a municipal bond versus a corporate bond. Now, I can see this topic to be tested much more in the future on the CPA exam. The reason is simple. The rule is this. The rule is simple because all what we need to know is interest on municipal bond is tax exempt. That's easy. As long as you see the word municipality, as long as you see the word state in that bond, well, it's not included in taxable. The trick the challenge is if you are giving the, the, the opportunity to evaluate an investment in a municipal bond versus a corporate bond. And this is what we will do in terms of computation. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So let's start by discussing the why. Why is municipal bond is tax exempt? It's a form of subsidy, indirect subsidy from the federal government. Why? Because municipalities and government and state government are in competition with corporations. So when you go to borrow money, you have private corporation, you have municipalities, you have state government, and the municipalities and the state government are not as competitive as corporations. So what the government says to make them competitive, because the federal government don't want to keep financing state and local government. What they told the investors is if you lend money to state government and municipalities, no taxes on your interest. So it's an incentive for you to do what? To lend your money to state and municipal government because you don't have to pay taxes. It served two purposes. One, it lowered the borrowing cost for the state and local corporate uh, and local government. The local government and the state government don't have to pay high rate as high as corporations. Also, this policy benefits specifically high income taxpayers. And we're gonna see why later on when we do when we perform computation. The higher your tax rate, the higher is your after-tax yield. So the higher is your tax rate, the more you are going to keep in terms of investing in a municipal bond. Why? Because you're earning money and let's assume you earned $100 and another individual earned $100. We have individual A, individual B. This individual, their, their tax rate is 30%. This individual, their tax rate is 10%. Individual A, because their tax rate is 30%, they save $30. Taxpayer B, because they, they earn $10, they earn $100, they save $10 in taxes. So the higher your tax rate, the higher is your saving. Also, municipal bond, we're going to see later, municipal bond interest is considered for Social Security benefit and inclusion. So when you're computing whether you have to pay taxes on Social Security or not, you have to include your municipal interest. So it helps you with saving taxes, but if you are receiving money from, from Social Security that's going to be included in your income. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because what you want to do if you're receiving Social Security, you don't want to pay taxes. Well, you would say, I, I would invest this in municipal bond. Well, if it is in municipal bond, the income is considered to determine whether your Social Security is ta taxable or not. So for Social Security 
tax purposes, they consider your municipal bond as interest in the computation whether you qualify to pay taxes or not. Let's take a look at an example to see the benefit of municipal bond. Let's assume you are offered a 12% corporate bond and a money bond of, 10, of 9%. Well, everything else is equal. No one will buy, no one will buy the municipal bond of 9%. Everyone's going to buy the corporate bond, assuming the risk is the same, the corporate bond of 12%. Now, also talking about risk, we could always assume, we could always fairly assume that government borrowing, government bond has a lower risk than private corporation. But for the sake of illustration, we're not going to go into risk. We're just going to look at the numbers. So everything else is equal. Everyone is going to buy the corporate bond because the corporate bond is paying 12%. Then the municipality or the state government cannot raise money. But remember, the state or municipal bond would say, look, we're paying you 9%, but whatever you earn on that money, it's all yours. You don't have to pay any federal taxes on it. Now, if you invest in the corporate bond and you earn interest, you still have to pay taxes. Now, how would you determine whether, whether you invest in the mini bond or the corporate bond? So one way to do it is this way. You will take the difference between the corporate and the mini bond, which is the difference between 12% and 9% is 3%. And you will divide this by 12%. You will get to 25%. What is this 25%? What does that determine? Here's what, here's what you would say. If if the buyer tax bracket is less than the implicit tax rate of 25%, so if your tax rate is less than 25%, you are better off buying the corporate bond because it's going to earn more. We're going to see how in a moment. If the buyer tax rate is greater than the implicit rate of 25%, you will buy the mini bond. So who would buy the mini bond? Anyone with a tax rate of more than 25%, they are better off buying the mini bond and earning and earning 9%. Why is that? Because after you pay your taxes, you're going to keep more money with the municipal bond. Okay, well, let's see. Let's assume A and B. Let's assume individual A invested $1,000, keep it simple, $1,000 in the municipal bond. So $1,000 times 9%. This individual will earn $90 and will keep the whole $90. Individual B invested $1,000. They earned 12%, $120. Now, this individual, as I mentioned, I just chose, chose uh, 20, you know, I already computed the implicit break even, which is 25%. Then let's assume the individual is indeed. And the tax rate of twenty five and in the tax in the tax bracket of twenty five percent. If they earned one hundred and twenty dollars, now they're gonna keep only seventy five percent out of it. So if we take one hundred and twenty, keeping 0 0.75 because you have to pay you have to pay twenty five percent in taxes. Notice you keep you are keeping ninety ninety dollars. Why? Because this this one hundred and twenty dollars you had to pay twenty five percent. Another way, if you take 120.25, you have to pay $30 in taxes. After you pay the $30 in taxes, you're left with $90. It's the same thing. So that's why if your tax rate is above, is above 25%, you are better off going with the municipal bond. Because let's assume your tax rate, make it 30%, just for the sake of illustration. So we kind of put this, I want to make sure you understand this. If your tax rate is 30%, now we're dealing with a tax rate of 30%. For individual A, they don't care whether it's 20, 50, 30, they're always going to earn $9 because they don't pay any taxes. For individual B, they're going to earn uh, 1,000 times 12% is 120. Now they're only going to keep 0 0.7 because they have to pay 30%. 0 0.7, they are left with $84. Notice because they went with the corporate bond and their tax rate is more, their tax rate, we're assuming 30%, they are not well off. And you can do the example, assuming their tax rate is 20%, then they are better off with the corporate bond. So there's a break even point, okay? Because we're gonna take the corporate bond times one minus the tax rate to come up with the equivalent rate. So the corporate bond is 12% times, whoops, one minus 12% times one minus the 
tax rate, assuming 25%, will give us an equivalent rate of 9%, just to kind of confirm it, confirm the computation. Let me show you the computation in a different way. Let's assume a taxpayer in the 35% tax profit. 35% tax bracket would only need a tax exempt bond with 3.9% to achieve the same after tax income as a taxable bond at 6%. Simply put, if you're in the 35 tax 35% tax bracket, 35% tax bracket, if someone offer you a mini bond 3.9 and a corporate bond of 6%, basically they're equal to each other. Okay. Again, let's show you the computation. You will take 0.39. You can take 0.39, another way to do it, divided by 1 minus the tax rate. And it's going to give you 6%. This means that the taxpayer can earn a lower yield on a tax exempt bond and still maintain their desired income. Because if they paid, if they earned the 6% on the corporate bond, 6% and there's in the 35% tax bracket, it means they're only going to keep from the 6% 0 0.65 because they have to pay 35%. So if you take 6% times 0.65, they are left with 3.9%. You want to be comfortable computing the after-tax yield, the after-tax rate for municipal bond, because this is what you're going to be asked on the exam. Now, you could also be asked, simple question, uh, a list of interests, and one or two of them is a uh, municipal bond, and they're going to ask you to, to compute what's included in taxable income, well, the municipal bonds are not included. That's easy, straightforward. You need to know the rules. But you might have to do this computation computing the after-tax return, which is very important. I showed it to you in different ways. Make sure you understand it. Make sure you understand that it's it, it depends. You have to do the computation. But if you know how to perform this computation, you know, uh, for example, for this example, if, the, if your tax rate above 25%, go with the mini bond. If your tax rate below 25%, go with the corporate bond. You could do the same thing with, you know, using different interests and do the computation. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures to look at additional lectures, MCQs, exercises, resources that's going to help you understand this concept better. Whether you are a CPA exam candidate, enrolled agent, or an accounting student, understanding how after-tax yield on municipal bond work is important. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.